Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. On this Sunday, the Feast of the Holy Trinity, we may acclaim, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. The whole earth is full of his glory. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Welcome to this service where we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Trinity from the team at St Mary's East Barnet. My name is Alec, I'm the Rector of East Barnet and this is, uh, as many of you will know by now, uh, my vicarage and here are some of the books I haven't actually got round to reading behind me. If you'd like to join in with our worship this morning, all the words that you'll need to say will appear on the screen and they're also available in a downloadable and printable booklet form. Just click on the link below in order to access a PDF which you can view in your browser and therefore magnify as it's helpful to you, or download and print as A4 single sheets or as an A5 booklet. There are many other resources that we've created to help you and your spiritual life at home during the COVID-19 lockdown. If you'd like to access any of those, you can find some of them on this YouTube playlist, some of them on our SoundCloud playlist, and many, many of them publicised in our News from St Mary's email, which comes out every week. If you'd like more details of those resources or to receive that email, please contact our parish office on the address that appears below. This week, we are blessed to have many other people participating in this service. And if you'd like to join in by leading the prayers or the readings, then it will be lovely to hear you take um, Angela and Sarah's example to heart. And if you'd like to do that, please contact the parish office at the address below. I'm also joined this morning by Sean Sanders, who is my colleague in the East Barnet Anglican Methodist Partnership, to give our reflection for Trinity Sunday. We have too often exchanged the worship of the living God for idols of our own imagining. And the news this week is full of stories of those who have idolised power and control. Their own people, their own prejudices, their own racial intolerances over the love of God for all his people, and particularly for those who are vulnerable, excluded, outcasts, and the victims of prejudice. As we gather this morning to offer our praises to the holy and undivided Trinity, and to worship him in spirit and truth, let us call to mind our sins, our privileges, and those points where we have failed to stand with the people who most need God's love to bring them justice and a true peace in this world. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image 
to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we rejoice in this gift of the new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. In honour of the Feast of the Holy Trinity, our hymn this morning, played by Alan Danson, our Director of Music, is Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Our reading from the Hebrew Bible is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 12 to 17 and 27 to 31, and it's read by Angela. This is a reading from Isaiah. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? Who has directed the spirit of the Lord, or as his counselor has instructed him? Whom did he consult for his enlightenment? And who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Even the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are accounted as dust on the scales. See, he takes up the isles like fine dust. Lebanon would not provide fuel enough nor are its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded from my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary, his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. 
They shall walk and not faint. Here ends the reading. If, like Angela, you'd like to read a lesson, or if, like Sarah, later on in the service, you'd like to lead our intercessions, please contact the parish office and I'll do my best to give you details of how to do that. It's lovely that we hear other voices than mine raised in worship of God in these video services. Our canticle this morning calls us all to raise our voices towards the one Lord whom we praise. It is the song of deliverance. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. On that day you will say, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing God's praises, who has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy, you that dwell in Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our reading from the New Testament is taken from the Gospel of St Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. And again, it's read by Angela. This is a reading from Matthew, chapter 28. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Here ends the reading. Our Gospel canticle is the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father, Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our reflection this morning, which thinks on the Holy Trinity, and our relationship held within that triune love of God, is from Sean Sanders. Now, Sean is the minister of Barnet Brookside and Manor Drive Methodist Churches, and he's the associate minister in our ecumenical partnership, alongside myself, which is the East Barnet Anglican Methodist Partnership. It's wonderful to welcome him to lead our reflection this week. When I was candidating for the ordained ministry 26 years ago, 
I had to give my testimony and answer questions in front of a hundred ministers at a synod meeting in Archway Central Hall, along with five other candidates. The first candidate went in to appear before the synod. He came back looking shocked. They asked me what I meant by God, he said, shaking. The rest of us began to panic. What would we say if we were asked that same question? I prepared an answer in my mind. God is the transcendent one who creates us, greater than we can imagine, but the one who is also imminent, who is close to us. It wasn't exactly snappy, but I hoped it was enough for me to pass the audition. I was called in. Standing in front of a hundred ministers, I gave my testimony and then waited anxiously to respond to their deep theological questions. But they didn't ask me anything, let alone what I meant by God. A few years later, I realised there was an obvious answer to that question. What do Christians mean by God? God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. God is Trinity. It's as simple as that. But of course, you might say, hang on, it's not that simple. What do you mean by all of that? The Trinity can mean lots of things, and that's before you get into a discussion about the language of gender. In the church's year, this Sunday, Trinity Sunday, follows on from Pentecost Sunday, which we celebrated last week. This Sunday completes the round of special seasons in the church's year, beginning at Advent through to Christmas, Epiphany, and later Lent, Easter and Pentecost. By placing Trinity Sunday today, at the end of that cycle, we are marking that the Trinity is the working out of who and what God is to us in the light of what's gone before, particularly in the light of the birth, life, death and resurrection of Jesus. The Trinity is the way in which the early church worked out how to name the greatness and the wonder of God in community. Three persons in relationship with each other. It might not be a simple answer, but at least it's a starting point to explain the breadth, height, depth and closeness of God in Christian experience. The Trinity is a basis of exploration in how we can understand God. The Trinity is a treasured breakthrough in the early church's understanding of God. The Trinity roots us in the, in the riches of their reflections. People who've been there before us and asked the same questions as us have already begun to work out how to explain our experience of God. We in the modern world aren't the first people to ask searching questions or to seek meaning in experience. The early church was there before us. Those early Christians also worked out that to affirm the Trinity is not primarily to believe in something daft, which is hard to get your head around, but is a willingness to be embraced within the height, depth, breadth and closeness of God. Without wanting to impose it back into scripture, we can find the raw material for the Trinity in the Bible. The most explicit mention of the three persons of the Trinity is in our reading from Matthew's Gospel. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It's a well-known verse, except it's never translated correctly 
not even in the most accurate translations. In the original Greek, it doesn't actually say go. It really says going or as you are going or why you are going, while you are going. It's not a, an instruction. It's a participle, a doing word. We participate in the work of God. This has a profound shift in its meaning for us. To say while you are going or as you are going gives a much better sense that mission is about what we do in our lives day by day. We share and live our faith as Christian people from Monday to Saturday as well as Sunday. As we are going, we live the gospel in our homes workplaces, schools, these days socially distanced of course, and on Zoom, in Facebook, we live the gospel and so share in God's mission. Neither does this verse really translate as baptising in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, but rather as baptising into the name of God. God's name is not a good luck charm. We are baptised into a relationship. We enter into a community, into God's covenant people. To be a Christian and be baptised into God's covenant through Christ is to continually grow into relationship with God. If today I was Asked the question by those 100 ministers, what do you mean by God? I would reply, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Of course, they might still ask, well, what do you mean by that? To which I'd respond, at the heart of the Trinity is God in relationship, God in community, in which day by day we are embraced within the height breadth, depth and closeness of God. Thanks be to God. You can find Sean's reflection in written form attached to our News from St Mary's email. And if you'd like to receive that email or any other resources to help you with your spiritual life at home, please contact the parish office. The Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity. As the Athanasian Creed puts it, neither confounding the persons nor dividing the substance of God. For we worship united the Godhead of the Father, of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, who are one eternal one Almighty, one God and one Lord. The glory is equal and the majesty co-eternal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us now pray to the Trinity in unity. And our intercessions this morning are led by Sarah. Lord God, as we celebrate this Trinity Sunday, We remember that you are three in one. We marvel that relationship is at the heart of the divine, Father, Son 
and Holy Spirit. And we thank you that you invite us into this mystery for ourselves, offering us relationship with you, with one another and with creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, may we take steps to restore relationships where they are broken. We stand with all those outraged, mourning and protesting at the unjust death of George Floyd. We ask somehow for healing for this broken world and for those of us living in privilege that we would seek to better understand and for all of us that we would stand in solidarity with those for whom injustice is a normal part of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we remember in, your, in today's gospel your great commission to go and make disciples of all nations. In these strange days of pandemic and lockdown, this may seem a remote possibility, but we thank you for how we can connect online with people around the world. And we pray for all those serving you by serving the world in these days of crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, we thank you that you give strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak. Tiredness, fear and loneliness are part of what's plaguing us all. Help each of us to put our hope in you, that our strength would be renewed, that we would soar on wings like eagles, walk and not be faint. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, we pray for all those living through violence, conflict and civil unrest in the United States, in Brazil, in southern Sudan. May your church be an instrument not of violence, but of peace. We pray for your shalom to break through. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the United Kingdom for our government and all those in power to act with wisdom, integrity and compassion. We pray especially for difficult decisions about easing the lockdown and for those dealing with the ongoing pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we lift before you our community of East Barnet. We pray for health workers on the front line, for teachers, for pupils returning to school and those still learning at home. We pray for all those isolated and vulnerable and those seeking to serve them, for the food bank, for friend in need, for homeless action Barnet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill in body or mind, that they would know your peace and your healing touch we bring to mind all those known to each of us personally who are in need of our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we join with the Trinity, expressing our longing for restored relationship and healing in our world between people and with creation and with you. Protect us and fill us with your, with your love for our neighbours, near and far. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith, that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and for ever. Amen. United by our one faith in our one God, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his followers and friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Every Sunday morning, often after watching this service on YouTube, members of the St Mary's community gather over Zoom for conversation and increasingly gardening tips over coffee without a rotor. And also on Sunday morning, members of our community with younger children gather for an online Sunday club. If you'd like to take part in either of those activities, please contact the parish office for more details and for invitations to Zoom.